In the United States today, the beauty industry is valued at $532 billion. The fitness industry trails behind at a substantial $64 billion. Considering these numbers and the overlap between these two economic powerhouses, it's safe to say that Americans are obsessed with appearing healthy and attractive. Our outward appearance is a huge factor in how we are perceived by our peers, a means by which our social capital is calculated, and even a determinant of our professional success. In 2012, Business Insider found that studies have shown that more attractive people get hired sooner, get promotions more quickly, and are paid more than their less attractive co-workers. Although this study was done several years ago, these findings are evidently applicable to today's professional world, especially with the rise of corporate social media. This poses the question, what is healthy? What is beautiful? There is little medical evidence that supports the idea that the models we idolize are truly physiologically in exemplary health. Conversely, there is overwhelming evidence that suggests the contrary. In recent years, there has been slightly more variety in the spectrum of celebrated body types through Instagram fitness modeling. However, there is still ambiguity of authority. Who has the authority to define health and beauty? By studying the genealogy of our perception of health and beauty, we can gain a more holistic understanding of the power dynamics, hegemony, and meaning-making process behind these concepts. Fashion will forever be a means of making a statement. It continuously maintains and reflects the beauty standards of the time, and it is also a way to carry out tradition and history. Fashion can be influenced by world events such as a war or the economy. Popular fashion often reflects the mood of each decade and showcases changes in society as the styles of clothing and accessories evolve with the times. It's a part of the social order that you wear clothes out in public, so unless people suddenly stop wearing clothes altogether, fashion isn't going anywhere. However, Fashion is constantly evolving. Fashion has been repaired to be accurate and socially correct for each time period as possible. It's no longer ideal to walk down city streets in Victorian era gowns. It just isn't practical. Finally, fashion has been transformed. This is where body image standards derive from. For example, just from the 20s to the 30s, there was a dramatic switch in what the ideal body type was. The 20s were more flat chested, had boyish, boyish figures and short cut hair. While in the 30s, it was more desirable to have the Marilyn Monroe body, curvy, larger breasts, and slim waist. Then we jump back to the slim-waisted, long, skinny legs of the 60s, echoing fashion icons such as Twiggy. We continue to see these jumps around what is and isn't in every decade. When equitable, accurate, and inclusive representation is omitted, people who are part of the omitted group conceptualize themselves, their character, as abnormal. The rapid development of social media has created an interesting new interaction amongst ourselves. A study conducted by Dove concluded that 82% of women believe that social media has a strong influence on the way in which society sets beauty standards and norms. Social media shapes how society perceives beauty by constantly featuring models, actresses, and athletes with desirable figures and faces. As one scrolls through media, Platforms, they are bombarded with photos of women with tiny waists, complemented with voluptuous curves, luscious locks of hair, plump lips, voluminous eyelashes, perfectly manicured nails, and flawless skin. The repetition of this look sets a beauty standard that provokes many women to buy viral glam products, undergo cosmetic alterations, and follow beauty trends in search of validation and acceptance. The UK has seen 73% referral to images of the Kardashian-Jenner sisters for cosmetic surgery and a 700% spike in requests for lip fillers after Kylie Jenner made her statement confirming she had lip fillers. There has always been a pressure on women to appear a certain way, but social media provides a quicker broadcasting of what is needed to be considered beautiful. Therefore, superficial alterations are more advertised and accepted now more than ever before. While there are plenty of users that perpetuate unrealistic beauty standards by promoting products such as pills that make your hair grow, waist trainers, or detox tea, there are other members of social media that defy the beauty norm and redesign what it means to be beautiful. There are various beauty bloggers who are becoming their own media creators that are using social media to reconstruct all preconceived notions of beauty. Just like all trends, a new wave is quickly taking over social media that harbors sentiments of self-love and acceptance towards all shapes and sizes, causing yet another beauty norm. 
What has remained constant is that only a small margin of women at a time are granted with the label of attractive. As Hall points out, we can see the abstract mythical norm through what is represented in society. In today's digital culture of mass communication, outlier voices are working hard to change our narrow perspectives, and in some cases it's working. Famous Sports Illustrated cover model Ashley Graham has amassed a net worth of nearly six million as a model and self-proclaimed body activist, preaching positivity, a lifestyle of moderation, and self-love. Hall describes otherness as a delicate issue. Difference is essential, but we draw our concepts through similarities. This is why representation is important, so that a wider, more accurate range of normalcy is communicated. Stefania Ferrario articulated this common frustration, stating that I'm often labeled a plus-size model. I do not find this empowering. Let's have models of all shapes, sizes, ethnicities, and drop the misleading labels. The beauty standard of woman has continued to change as cultural and societal views change as well. Carrie insists that a reality is produced, maintained, repaired, and restored, and we can see this in the genealogy of the concept of body image. Symbolic practices like advertising, fashion, and social media have found its way into social discourse. No true or definite meaning of body image will ever emerge, as our culture and history continue to shape meaning. Today, though, there is more of an emphasis for body positivity through powerful voices like the companies Dove and Lane Bryant. From corsets to fit tea to body positive advertisements, health and body image are going through its processes of reparations. In 10 years time, we might just see health and body image in a new light.